Hello everybody, my name is Marvin White, also known as Packet Switch with Wired for Games, and I am going to teach you how to use the Open Broadcaster software for live streaming and recording. Now this is a completely free program that is currently in its beta format, and is pretty good overall. Um, now, to download it first off, you just go to the uh, website obsproject.com, and then you go to the tab Download, where then you click Download. And then you wait about five seconds after SourceForge appears, and then you'll be able to download. Now that we've got the installer file, we're downloading that. Download. As you can see, I've already downloaded it before. Then you just double click and you follow the simple instructions in the setup uh, program. Now on to the actual program itself. Here's the Open Broadcaster program in its entirety. This one window will run your entire stream and or recording setup. Now first off we go into the settings. You can either go and click this button or you can go up in here and click there. Now this is your settings area. You will focus everything as far as quality and networking goes in this uh, general area first of all you got general which is the language that you can choose for the program I am American so I speak English uh, probably horribly though for all the people who live over in Great Britain so yes um, then we go to encode encoding video encoding this uh, verifies what kind of bitrate your video will have and what kind of buffer size you'll have as you can see the buffer size determines how much data is buffered this value particularly affects high motion scenes if you don't know what it what to use set it at the same uh, size as your bitrate now currently okay one thing you must uh, get used to is the fact that if your upload speed is bad like if it's less than one megabit per second you're not gonna be having a high quality stream you're gonna have at most a 480p stream you can't go 720 with uh, like uh, less than one megabit per second stream simply because it ruins the quality of the overall picture so even at me who has a 650k KB uh, upload speed I can at least get a 480p stream going on uh, for the video encoding you also get the quality balance which can focus on uh, as it says, we'll attempt to target a certain quality depending on your bitrate and buffer size. Sending this to a high value with a low bitrate will sacrifice the quality of high motion scenes in favor for non-moving scenes. Uh, so basically, gameplay that requires high motion will go higher uh, in for like COD uh, streams or something. Something that requires you to be moving around all the time. Now going on to broadcasting settings, we'll have this. For mode, you have live stream and file output only. Now in the live stream mode, you can live stream to a specific folder, and then you gotta, uh, or you can live stream to a specific website, such as like the Twitch uh, channel that you own, or any of these type of sites that it's pre uh, set up for. You can also do a custom one. Um, going up to the servers, you can also check out the different servers as far as streaming wise. Closest one for, to me, for example, is the Miami. Flo uh, Florida server that's uh, the one that will provide me the best ping and so far the best uh, signal uh, you can also choose this uh, auto reconnect in case your stream automatically goes out it will automatically try and reconnect to your uh, signal or to the server uh, you can set up a delay on your on your uh, stream by up to however many seconds or minutes that you want it to in case you have a vague like stream sniper problem uh, you can minimize the network impact. This sends out a buffer zone of so many kilobits and will minimize the amount of impact, as it says, that it has on your network. So you can do a little bit more with your uh, stream and your like production quality uh, by having a little bit more network available. In the live stream mode, you can also save to the file, whereas in the file output only, you only are able to uh, save to a file now I usually set this up in case I am going to stream and I want to put this uh, file on my YouTube eventually now we have the stream uh, we can set up a file path as you can see mine's on my desktop and it's called test.mp4 
they do save these as mp4 files so in case so that way it gives the best quality to go straight up to YouTube in case you want to do that uh, start stream hotkey you can set up the uh, hotkeys as far as starting and stopping everything pretty much so uh, I usually set mine as control num minus and control num plus that way I can have just a simple uh, two-handed gesture in case I want to start and stop it gives me the most uh, practicality and avoids any kind of weird one-handed gestures um, yeah, so I want to save my my uh, file stuff. Okay, for the video tab, we go into the base resolutions. Mine is a simple 1360 by 768 resolution. That is 720p, usually, or a little bit more than 720p. 720p is registered at 1280 by 720. Uh, if you want to know how resolutions and the ADPs and all that work, then uh, 240p is 320 by 240. Uh, you have 480, which is, I think... 640 by 480, 720 is 1280 by 720. It always goes by the le the second number. That's what kind of P it is. Hence, uh, 1080p is 1920 by 1080. Get it? Got it? Good. Um, resolution downscale right here. This uh, improves video quality at the cost of resolution. Therefore, if you need a little bit m like, it improves the quality if you have a low bandwidth. So this helps a lot. Hence, mine goes down to a 480, a little bit more than a 480p scale. <coughs> Excuse me. And it greatly improves my ability to stream. Um, I also set my FPS at 30, simply because that is the best uh, quality that I can get out at, on my uh, stream. I might, I might try and go down, but you can set it to whatever you want. Do you want 60? You got 60. Do you want 120? You got 120 right there, bro. Therefore, you can go all Counter-Strike stream and everything all the time. May have a lot of impact on your network, but oh well. That's what you want. I just keep it at mine at 30. And now, we go to audio. Now you can set up your desktop audio device. Mine is usually my speakers because I want people to listen to what I'm doing. Uh, if you have a program like the Virtual Audio Cable program, then you can set up different programs to output to different... Uh, like little lines that are virtually created uh, that you can set up but usually I just keep mine, mine on speakers because it's free uh, then I got my microphone usually right now I have a Samson CL1U that I bought because I wanted to try this out as you can hear it is a, a pretty good quality microphone works great 80 bucks yeah um Right here, you can choose up the push to talk uh, options so you can do like a delay in case you want to just like prepare for your message or something um, right here you got your hotkeys to mute and unmute your mic and desktop mine is, mine is the divide key and the uh, multiplication key with uh, the control as well hence avoiding the awkward one handed gestures uh, you can also uh, set your set your uh, microphone to a mono stream or you can uh, and you can also set an auxiliary boost for your microphone hence like decibels so if you get like too little of a sound then you can boost it up okay then we go into the advanced tab which uses this general thing which is the multi-threaded optimizations now in this area I'm not quite sure but I believe it allows you to uh, use a little bit more of your CPU to the program so you can get a little bit more quality of the stream now on this video part you have the CPU preset on here you'll see it setting this value higher reduces CPU usage by sacrificing certain aspects of quality on the other hand setting this value lower decrease or increases at the quality at the cost of more CPU recommended is very fast I just set mine at fast because I don't want to use my entire CPU at the cost of uh, lagging out my game uh, you can also use these options which I have not and I will not just simply because I'm afraid of wood of what might happen um, and plus my stream won't be able to handle it um then we go to the audio settings so you can use for a higher quality resampling in case you got a little bit more of a, a quality for your audio and hence having like a really awesome sound card or something uh, force audio to sync to video time so that way you can just it works whenever you have like desyncing issues um, Global audio time offset. That way, in case you do have syncing issues, you can set up like the milliseconds in case you want to very fine tune the audio. Then you have the network and you can set it to bind to different 
uh, IPs, uh, like for different uh, programs and stuff. Uh, then you got low latency mode and latency tuning factor. So yeah, that was the settings menu. And now we go on to the bulk of the program. Now in order to see what's in this gray box, you go down here and you click the preview stream. That allows you to get a black box, which has no scenes available because you need to create the scenes. You create the scenes by right clicking and add scene. We're just going to call this blah blah blah. And we're going to add something. So what shall we add? We shall add an image as our splash. We're going to actually use English in that one and just browse. We're going to go into our stream folder, which is my designated one. And we'll go into my stream splash that I already pre-created for my stream. We will click check for file changes in case I decide to update something on that uh, image. That way it will automatically update on the stream. Uh, then we shall go into another scene and show you how to display your desktop. Now for this, I have already pre-created like a global source for desktop. I will show you how to do global sources in just a bit. But right now if you just want to just regularly open and show your desktop, then you just go to software capture. Press OK. You can name it whatever you want. And you can go up to monitor capture. Uh, you can disable arrow and video settings to apparently maximize your FPS, but uh, right now it doesn't matter. Um, I capture my monitor too, which is the one you're looking at, because I'm currently recording with FF Split, which is another free program that I could show you at any time if you wish. Uh, at this moment, you can also choose to uh, get subregions. So if you've ever seen like a podcast where they have people's uh, webcams cut out and specifically placed all over the screen with an awesome video or image overlay, that is basically what you do. You basically get a subregion, you uh, put the box around the area you want to capture, and that is what you need to do in order to individually get every single scene. Uh, you can also co color key or chroma key in here, so you can uh, basically green screen. Like if you've ever seen something like... Uh, in the Littlewood, he does green screening all the time to basically create his... Green screen is invisible where he's actually almost in the game frame. You can also set the opacity to whatever you want in case you need to get it just a little bit transparent. So yeah. We got that going on. As you can see, desktop with an awesome, nice, little, trippy little portal. Okay. Now, we go up to this. In case you want to know how to directly capture your game... We will go over here to this one feature of Open Broadcaster Software, which is the game capture f uh, part. Now in here, you can basically go and enter any application that's currently open and put it in here. So if I want to use, say, uh, I don't know, Steam. No, never mind. We'll just not use any of that, simply because it doesn't matter at the moment. But whenever you have a game program out, then it will allow you to uh, capture the stream coming from that application. And it will automatically go up on here. I do not have any games open, so it doesn't display anything. A uh, secondary thing that you can do is create hotkeys for all of your scenes. So if you want to set a hotkey, just go up here and I press Control 1. For this one, we do Control 2. And for this one, can you guess it? What are we going to do? No, we're going to go control 4 just because. I want to mess with you guys. OCD. So then we go 1, 2, 4. 1, one 2, 4. 1, 2, 4. Yeah. That's my splash screen. Gotta love it. Yay, specs. And, uh, yeah. So to create your global sources, as I was going to say, I was going to teach you, you just click global sources, go to add. You can basically choose any one of these. So if I want to, uh, I don't know, add text. Please enter a name. Flurbel Gerbil. Yeah. So you can choose any of these options. And uh, you can create opacity and you can create a scroll speed to whatever direction you want it to. It can even go negative. In case you want it to go from that way to that way or that way to that way. You can set a background color and you can, uh, check the color for the individual uh, font. 
uh, enter the text, we're just going to go that, because it works. Okay. Florable Gerbil, that's our new global source. And on this, we're going to add global source, Florable Gerbil. Click OK. And you see that up there? You don't? Oh, that's because it's that too small. But now you see it. See how slow it's scrolling even? We can even go and change the properties of that. We can change it to... Oh, what is that? We're going to go 24. We're going to make it bold. We're going to make it italic. Give it an underline. Make it vertical. No, we're not going to go to vertical. So, yeah. We're going to go super high speed scrolling. Oh, yeah. Look at it. So beautiful. Look at that beautifulness. And that's how you do a global source and also how you do text uh, marquees in case you want to display information such as your YouTube uh, page or your Twitter page that will be on a constant scroll and it can be displayed whenever you need it to. At the simple click or press of a couple buttons. And that, my friends, was the Open the Broadcaster software tutorial that I have done for you guys. That is Flubber Gerbil. My name is Marvin White, also known as Packet Switch with Wired for Games. Thank you for watching. Hope you learned something.